Hey guys, today I'm at the Detroit Auto Show with one of the most important new EVs that's gonna be on sale for 2024 model year, 2023 calendar year. This is the all new Blazer EV. This is part of the Ultium family of vehicles that also underpins the Hummer EV, of course the new Silverado EV, the Cadillac Lyric, and importantly, the Chevy Equinox EV. This is gonna be the slightly more expensive, larger, roomier, and more performance oriented brother to the Equinox EV, just as you'd expect out of the Blazer gasoline versus the Equinox gasoline. Starting around up front, you'll notice that the front end is definitely distinctively electric Chevy. We have a design that kind of reminds me of the Chevy Bolt, to be honest. We have an illuminated Chevy logo. That's a really cool touch. Lots of LED accents, LED headlights, um, blacked out trim down lower on the vehicle because this is the SS trim. You can expect more body colored parts if you get the other versions of the Blazer. Now what's making the Blazer different than the Equinox is the high-end SS trim with nearly 600 horsepower. It's gonna be actually about 560 horsepower, I should say, under the hood and under the back end of the vehicle. Let's start out with key things to know. The base version of the Blazer, that's gonna happen a little bit after the on-sale date. So first they're gonna start with the more powerful versions, but that's gonna give you about 250 miles of all electric range, 210 horsepower and front wheel drive. Then there's gonna be a model with a bigger battery pack. There are actually gonna be three different battery packs in this vehicle. The two, first two are shared with the Chevy Equinox EV. Then the bigger battery pack is shared with the Cadillac Lyric. The middle battery pack is gonna be a rear wheel drive vehicle. So you can get this as front wheel drive or rear wheel drive or as an all wheel drive vehicle, your choice between all three of those. If you get the high performance version of the Blazer, then that's gonna be all wheel drive only with the bigger battery pack quite logically borrowed out of the Cadillac Lyric. One thing that's really interesting with the latest series of EVs from GM are the wheels and tire sizes. We're talking really, really big wheels in this vehicle. These are 22 inch alloys wrapped in 275 with tires. These are pretty wide, but they're not extreme low profile. There's a little bit of extra cushion there. So hopefully the ride quality will be pretty decent. Now wrapping around to the rear, we find a different style than we find in the Equinox. This is not just a scaled up version of that. So full LED taillights there, but no light bar that connects from one side to the other. Definitely giving this a different vibe. There's also a windshield wiper back there if you're part of the windshield wiper lovers club. Helping remind you that you've selected the electric Blazer. We have the little blue logo right there for the E in Blazer. And this one is the all wheel drive trim. Blacked out portions of the bumper down there below. Standing next to the Blazer, you'll certainly notice the roof line. It is lower than we find in the gasoline Blazer. And that's something that we're seeing in a lot of EVs out there. Cadillac Lyric, the Equinox, EVs from the competition as well. Aerodynamics are very important. So this is generally speaking gonna be lower, longer, and a little bit wider as we see in a lot of electric vehicle variants out there. Charging happens behind this door, just in front of the driver's door on the front fender. You can see it's a really eccentrically shaped door. It blends well with the cut lines on the vehicle. In here, we have a standard J1772 port, but oddly, only one AC charger is available on the Blazer, making it different than the Equinox. On the Equinox, you can select between an 11 and a half kilowatt charger or a 19.2 in the upper trims. Here, it's just the slower one at 11 and a half. It's honestly pretty quick already and not too many homes or businesses are capable of charging at 19 kilowatts. But if you wanted to, you could do that in the Equinox and that is gonna get you to your completely full battery definitely faster. Now, DC fast charge speeds, that's gonna depend on the battery pack you select. Only the big battery pack is gonna charge at a peak rate of 190 kilowatts. The other ones are gonna be slower, probably down around 150 or perhaps even a little bit slower. General Motors seems to be really conservative with their DC fast charge rates on the Ultium platform and the Ultium platform charging rates are highly dependent on the battery pack size. So only the Hummer with the biggest battery available is gonna charge at 350. The rest of them, it's all gonna tear down based on the battery pack. On the inside, the Blazer definitely has a different theme than the Equinox, but you can see that some things are in the family. For instance, this large LCD infotainment system, just about 17 inches, it's absolutely huge. And the instrument cluster are shared with the top end versions of the Equinox. The lower end versions of the Equinox are gonna get smaller screens. These are also gonna be shared with the Chevy Silverado EV. So the Ultium platform is not just about battery technology sharing, but also some interior component sharing. This is gonna have newer level components all around the vehicle. So different steering wheel, different turn signal stocks, et cetera, than we've seen in other vehicles from GM in the past. The steering wheel is pretty similar to the one that we find in the Colorado and the Canyon. It still has buttons on the back for the infotainment system, but buttons on the front for things like 
that large instrument cluster, and of course the cruise control controls as well. Moving across the dashboard over here underneath the infotainment screen, find the row of buttons for various climate control functions, three large air vents, dual zone climate control there. Looks like a storage compartment. We're not allowed to open anything in here, unfortunately. But then we have two large cup holders there, a lot of storage going on, but no floating storage area like we do find in some EVs out there. The seats look very similar to what we find in the Equinox, only scaled up. So these are probably gonna be a little bit more comfortable, especially if you're a larger person. We have power seats on the driver's side and passenger side as well. Also a big panoramic moonroof, and it is going to open with a power shade. So if you're tired of EVs that just have a big sheet of glass there that bake you in the sun, you might wanna take a look at this one. Lots of cool things going on in here. I really love all the detail around the air vents and the trim surround there, uh, things like that. It's really a well done design, I think. And it looks like a lot of the materials are gonna be premium on the inside, but I'm not allowed to poke at anything. Let's go take a look at the back seat. The big reason to get the Blazer, of course, is the wheelbase and the extra length that gives us for the interior cabin. This is going to be roomier and more comfortable than the Equinox, just as you'd expect. It's also wider, and you'll really notice that back here in, for instance, the dimensions of this center console area. Because this is a dedicated EV platform, we have a completely flat floor back here, two USB input ports, and definitely wider spacing across the rear. If you're looking for an EV that's going to be easier to accommodate things like adults in the back, larger kids, child seats, things like that, you're gonna want the Blazer over the Equinox. I also would not be surprised if this was larger on the inside than something like a Tesla Model Y. Dimensionally, it looks like the Model Y is perhaps a little bit closer to the Equinox EV. This is a little bit larger than that in some dimensions and likely a little bit more accommodating in the back seat. This is certainly wider across the back seat than the Kia EV6 or the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Those again are competing a little bit more with the smaller option from Chevy as far as EVs go. Nice premium options back here, including the red leather here. It looks like we're gonna have a fold down center armrest there. And it's a little bit difficult again to talk about the materials quality because we can't touch anything, but everything looks really nicely done back here and pretty similar to the front. Pop open the hatch and we find a cargo area that's likely going to be a little bit smaller than the current generation Blazer. Aerodynamics is very important with any EV. So when you take a look at the profile of the Blazer, you'll notice that the roof line is lower than we find in the average mid-size two row crossover. And the opening is definitely more raked in this dimension yielding a slightly less square cargo area. Now the final production version is gonna have a much taller hatch. This is a very, very early prototype, so the hatch doesn't open fully. It also is gonna have some extra storage space under that load floor. It looks pretty wide. It's not quite as wide as the rear seats though, because the Blazer was designed for crazy wide tires, 275 with tires. And as we see in some other vehicles with wide tires, that means that the wheel wells end up intruding a bit more into the interior as a result. Logically, this is going to be fairly similar to the average midsize crossover, but if you really are concerned about storage space, you're probably going to want something that's a little bit bigger, or you might want a plug-in hybrid at the moment, because this is going to be smaller than something like a Grand Cherokee or a Hyundai Santa Fe. If you are interested in a Chevy Blazer, be sure and head over to your Chevy dealer soon, because these are going to be on sale in calendar year 2023 as a 2024 model year vehicle. That on sale date is gonna depend, of course, on the trim level you select. The more expensive, more performance oriented trims, those are gonna come first. Then a little bit later, we're gonna get access to the less expensive trims, the less expensive trim being the ones that are probably in the same price range as the Equinox, for instance. So you could choose you want a little bit less range, perhaps a little bit less performance, but a bigger vehicle for the same price. Chevy's gonna give you that option with these two competing EVs in these two different size categories. This is logically more of a direct competitor to something like a Tesla Model Y than the Chevy Equinox because of its performance. You can get nearly 600 horsepower if you're interested in that that in your Blazer, you won't be able to do that in the Equinox, even though size-wise, it's about the same size as a Tesla Model Y. This is definitely on the larger side of things, and it's really gonna be a new sort of entry for full EVs in America, because up till this point, we've seen a lot of really small EVs and a lot of luxury segment-oriented EVs, fewer mainstream-oriented EVs like this all-new Blazer here. At this point in time, most of them, again, are really targeted at BMW, Mercedes-Benz size segments. This is quite different than that. I'm really interested to see how this performs and, of course, how it goes on sale a little bit later this year. Be sure and stay tuned for that coming up in a separate video. And likely, sometime in the first half of 2023, I should be able to get my hands on one and drive it. Now, one key thing to know, no storage space under here under the hood while we're talking about storage. And that's because this does have that option of front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or all wheel drive. And they decided to honestly just save money by not giving it a front trunk. 
Uh, logically, there should be room in there if you get the rear wheel drive version because there's no motor going on up front, but there's still all the plumbing for the standard heat pump system and everything else going on. They just decided to just not bother with that particular option. Anyway, hit that subscribe button down there. Find me on all the related channels and of course on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those other places. I'll see all of you next week.